Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Pablo's Cracking. It's D-Boss. We are to this Choice TV vet. It's titled, Unpopular Opinions That Keep Me Up At Night. I love his unpopular opinion videos. He be, he be talking his ish. I don't always agree with him, but, you know, I don't always have to agree with people. That's the beauty of, you know, us being different. I like hearing different perspectives, you know. So, yeah, let's hear what these unpopular opinions are. Let's watch. Some viewers might find this disturbing. Your discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice and you watching Choice TV. Today. For today's video, I had to come on here and bless y'all with an unpopular opinion because there's been a lot of shit going on in this world and I just have a lot oh, to get no. off my chest. People are just dick riders. Crumble cookies are not good, okay? Well, I mean, they change flavors all the time, but I remember my ex introduced me to Crumble years ago, okay? Maybe like a couple years ago, and, you know, he thought he was giving me some gourmet cookies or whatever, and I'm like, oh, these look cute. Oh, this might be good. I was like, these are trash. <laughs> it was, I mean, that wasn't bad, but it, it wasn't good either. He, like, was hyping them up as if they were so delicious, and I'm like, mm -hmm not giving out what are these prices if you want some real good quality pastries i will go with nothing but cakes crack 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 their churro little cake is one of the best desserts i've ever had in my life but it was it was a special edition that's not the word i'm looking for limited time whatever it it, it was only available for a short period of time so it's not it's not on their regular menu but I, it comes in and out like they've had it a couple different times so you got to keep an eye out and watch them on instagram <laughs> always checking their ig and seeing when they're gonna release that troll cake again oh my god oh my god that cake is so good listen when they had it it was for a limited time or whatever i want to say it was for like two weeks something like that at the time, I was about to go out of town. I was mad that I was about to go out of town because I was no longer going to be able to order them cakes. I was so mad. Like, damn. And by the time I get back, they're going to be gone. I was so mad. I, I, I reconsidered my trip. <laughs> I reconsidered my trip because I was like, I need more of these troll cakes, but I'm about to leave. Mm, this was like in the summertime. Oh, my God. So far. But from their regular menu, <laughs> the lemon cake is the best. So if you have a nothing but cakes, in your area look into it i like the lemon one they used to have marble and that one was super fire they got rid of it what the fuck i don't know why they did that but the lemon one is is my favorite yeah. let me start by saying <laughs> that if you have a problem with my popular opinions then you can go kiss my fucking ass oh. and go suck your mother i oh. said what i said and i'm not taking it back and these are my popular opinions and if you disagree or agree feel free to just let me know but all fucking well these are my unpopular opinions and here we go. I do not care, nor do I want to hear about Kamala Harris sleeping her way to the top. What? Yeah, she was a hoe. Yes, she probably popped her poom poom for a real one just so she can get to the top. We Who keep said she was a hoe? He did this and she did that and she was a hoe and she did this and she leveraged her appearance. Thotting through life and they basically said she got her her political star her political upstart because she was dating this guy willie can't think of his last name right now first she meaningful job sense. in politics was given to her by her boyfriend at the time who's married willie brown most powerful democrat in california but we know that willie brown is not the only powerful person she did i will not be shamed out of discussing this by people who say it's slut shaming or it's not relevant it is relevant when a young candidate tries to sleep her way into politics and into power when she know. had an affair with a man 30 years older than she was she was 29 to 30 and he was 60 sure enough that relationship paid dividends for her in more ways than one and so what who cares most of our mamas and grannies was hoes it is what it is if she was able to leverage her looks to get what she wants who cares because you want to know something she's not nobody's baby mama she's Ooh. married She's successful. Yeah, she might have been a hoe, but at least she was smart enough to be a smart hoe. I believe in the saying that if you're going to be a hoe, be the best goddamn hoe you can be. If you want to pop your poom poom wide open for a real nigga, then that's me. what you have to do to get to the top. I have no problem with her being a hoe and sleeping her way to the top. It's not that serious. And for people to bring that up is really corny and insensitive. Because at the end of the day, a lot of hoes get fucked on couches and don't get shit but a fucking STD, mm. PTSD, mm. trauma, block on fucking iMessage, and absolutely nothing in return. Most hoes get less. And clearly, this hoe won and got a lot because now she's in the running to being the president of the United States. Mm. I'm still not going to vote for her ass, but... I don't care that she's a hoe. What are her policies? What can she do? 
My next unpopular opinion is, is Drake's or whole not, career is not know. over. It's ridiculous that yeah, people are keep saying that Drake's career is over and he's I don't done. I think that's an unpopular opinion. I feel Look, like most people think that. Drake has done some problematic things. He's done a lot of gatekeeping. He's done a lot of Drake. shit to make himself be at the top, shit on people, adopt people's styles, literally will hire 50 million Probably ghostwriters and has leverage Niggas people's flows. Language. People's I like that and to song. be honest, Drake ain't going nowhere. He's a smart guy. Let's not forget that he gave us Take Care. Let's not forget that he gave us Started from the Bottom. Let's not forget that he gave us Views from the Six. Let's not forget that he gave us all these hits and classics. Drake is a GOAT and a legend, and Kendrick cannot diminish that. Drake is still the highest selling artist of all time compared to Kendrick Lamar. And yes, Kendrick Lamar might have won the battle, but Drake definitely won the war. This whole discussion about straight women not wanting to date bisexual men or down low men is nothing but misogyny it is because how is it that the people in the in the rainbow community get to choose who they, who they date like a gay person only wants to date another gay person and so on and so forth but when a straight woman says no i don't want to date a man who's bisexual i want a I don't know if we can call that misogyny. I think that's a bit of a reach. But I feel like straight women should have the prerogative to date whoever they want. If you don't want to date bi, then that's your that's your choice. So I, I don't feel like anybody should be shamed for that. <laughs> I mean, I don't personally care. You know, I already talked about this in my story time with my... Anyway, um, it's on my Patreon if you want all the tea. <laughs> you want some personal tea. Um, but... I know women, a lot of straight women do. A lot of them do. And they don't want to date bisexual men. And that is their choice. That's that's their fucking preference. And that's their choice. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a preference and picking who you want to date. I'm confused. Another straight man, it's deemed as homophobic. And her not wanting to date a... a uh, a, a bisexual man is, is seen as hatred and that they hate their sexual preferences or what they identify as. It's nothing but misogyny. So I'm coming out the gay swinging and I'm gonna be honest, I came across that TikTok and it did kind of make me see where she was coming from because a lot of what she said, it was very valid. However, I will say this, bisexual people do exist. And sometimes people like to sit up here and say, oh, well, I don't want to date someone that's bisexual because just no. Well, I find it interesting how people try to make it seem like you can only be attracted to a sexuality. You can't really be attracted to a sexuality. You're attracted to people. How many men have y'all seen, ladies watching this, how many men have y'all seen and been like, damn, he's fine, and then you find out he's actually gay? Let's be honest. We find people attracted based on how they look. And a lot of times, if someone's bisexual, you wouldn't really know unless they were to personally tell you. And that's the thing knowledge is power <laughs> so when you get that knowledge you have the power to make whatever decision you want people are turned off by that it's like uh me thinking of you getting bent over and your cheeks clap that turns me off or even if you doing the bending <laughs> who's doing the bending it it that turns me off so mentally now i can't do it so now i, I don't want it so it's like it, it's probably your best bet to not say anything and that's a whole nother conversation because a lot of men they hide that when when they are bisexual they don't like telling straight women and i i get it i i understand that that's you know deceptive and it's wrong sure but at the same time a lot of straight women aren't going to want to fuck with you if you are honest and tell them. And I, I I get having a preference. And that's their fucking preference. And I get them feeling like, oh, that's a turnoff. I don't like that. That's making me now not be sexually attracted to you. Now I'm not interested in you. So that that makes perfect sense. <laughs> like I get, I get why straight women don't want to deal with bisexual men. Sorry, but it's the reality. Like... And again, like I said, most straight women are like this, and I've heard many of their uh, of their reasons why, and I, I can relate to that. I understand it. Again, I don't personally care, but that's just me. That's me. But I can still understand why they care and being like, oh, you bending over, nigga. Just even imagining you bending over, a man, and that's like, oh, it's it, it's it's very conflicting because it's like when I think of you, I'm thinking of you as this masculine man that i'm with and a straight man and it's just you know man woman relationship that's what i'm attracted to but me thinking of you being with another man i'm not attracted to that 
And it doesn't have to be homophobia. And people just want to be victims so bad and relate everything to homophobia. It's not everything is about that. It's not that they're, that they're, you know, hateful about it. It's like, I don't mind other people's gay relationships. But when I'm thinking of my man, I don't want to even have the thought that he's fucking another man. Like, that's turning me off because I am attracted to heterosexual relationships. I am not attracted to gay relationships. And that that turns me off sexually. That's why I'm straight. <laughs> because uh, g g gay relationships turn me off. I I'm, not, I'm not into it. That does nothing for me. So it's like, mm. You feel me? But whatever. People are going to twist it and say it's homophobic and blah, blah, whatever, bro. Now, I'll be honest with you. You should have the right to choose if you don't like someone's lifestyle. That's completely reasonable if it doesn't work for you. But let's be honest for a second. There are so many women who have, you know, touched on their homegirl's breasts, touched on their homegirl's butt. When they was in middle though. school and high school and primary school, yeah. they kissed the girl, made out with a girl, did stuff with a girl, all types men of stuff. Men don't care. But I find it interesting how they That's draw ridiculous. the line with men. Why be hypocritical? Why not keep the same energy with yourself? I hope women have the same energy if they've done stuff with women and men don't want to date them. That's just what I'm being honest about. If you are and a woman, some men don't though. I will I will say that I definitely came across a man who did not like that I was bisexual. He was like Christian and he he did not like it. And we didn't end up continuing to date when I was honest with him and told him that. And I wasn't mad about it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's your prerogative. Most men don't care, but some men do. Some men are like, ugh. They're, they're kind of grossed out by it. And I still don't think that's homophobic. I think it's more so like, maybe grossed out is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> or maybe they are, I don't know. But they, they are more so like, look, I like man on woman, like, sexual relationships and I thinking of you with another woman is just like mm, I'm kind of like uh, I don't I don't like that that really turns me off sexually and you've done stuff with a woman just out of experimentation but that's their prerogative and the guy doesn't want to fuck with that he thinks oh that's weird that's weird I'm not messing with that then you should respect this choice too and I hope people yeah. keep the same energy absolutely the 13th amendment needs to be abolished I feel like if we're going to talk about any type of thing that needs to be set in stone and removed, we're going to talk about the 13th Amendment. So as we all know, we have a crazy-ass prison system in America. We have a lot of prison systems that are owned by the wealthy. We have private prisons that are owned by wealthy mm -hmm. individuals. And a lot of times, these wealthy individuals are using prisoners to literally package Starbucks cups, to package bed, bath, and body work stuff, to package stuff for a lot of major corporations to do you know amazon work to do all types of packaging and shipping and all types of you know landscaping work and guess how much these prisoners are getting paid they're getting paid like 25 cents 45 cents an hour to put to their commissary so they can buy fucking ramen noodles that's worth like eight dollars associated press investigation found that everything from grains meat eggs and milk because what else they supposed to do they in jail like make yourself useful and do something but it's like nobody about to pay you no full wage you are a prisoner you are in jail you killed somebody you grape somebody like get to work it's all right harvested or produced by incarcerated people and their labor finds its way into the supply chains of some of the most recognized brands and largest food companies in the world we followed as cattle raised at the louisiana state penitentiary were transported to a meat processor in Texas. From there, the beef ended up in the supply chains of McDonald's, Burger King, and major grocery stores. I feel like I have became a slave, a product of, 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 of the convict system, because everything that I was doing was profiting the prison. The 13th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution abolished slavery and involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime. Uh, roof ragging? Y'all don't find it a little bit suspicious that only two particular racial groups are most likely to be in jail, i.e. Black people and Hispanics? You don't find it funny how they're more likely to grow in impoverished communities and how they're more likely to literally grow up in screwed up schools, messed up parks, crappy areas, no fathers in the homes, and they're more likely due to their circumstances to end up in jail. You don't find that kind of suspicious? We spoke to prisoners who were working mm -hmm. on the same plantation down. soil where slaves toiled more than 150 years ago. Many were making pennies an hour. Some were getting nothing at all. 
Others were being contracted out to private companies for taking part in work release programs. Prisoners can sometimes be punished for refusing to work, even thrown into solitary confinement. So the list goes on, but there's this right here is a list of companies that literally use prison labor to package their meat, package their holiday orders, and much more. These are companies that literally profit, like Starbucks, McDonald's, and many, many more, just so they won't have to pay factory workers. Isn't that fucked up? This is just a lesson to just stay out of jail because honestly, the system is just built for a certain majority to literally fail. I feel like if you want to have prisoners doing all that work, yeah, they might have committed a crime, but can they at least get a reasonable fucking wage in there? You know what I mean? And then these prisoners get out of jail and they can't even manage and maneuver through society. They have to struggle and hustle because they can't find a job. I mean, regular working class... And these are prisoners, by the way. Usually people who are doing, like, hard time and they, they done did some serious shit. I'm, I'm sorry. Get to work. Who just got out of college, can't even find a job. And prisoners are literally competing with college Give kids who are waiting on their, you know, recommendation letter to come in or are waiting for that job that they want to work at, their big boy, big girl job, to hit them back up. So they're competing with prisoners and prisoners are competing with them and prisoners need a job. It's just, it's ridiculous. Because prison and job are not the it's, same it's, thing. Kind of already <laughs> fucked up. Let me so think of okay. shit pay like this, it's just, it's ridiculous. And it's not fair and it's fucked up. Crumble cookies are not that good, they're but they're not that bad either. Exactly. So if I didn't know, crumble cookie Middle. has been taken over all over. Like, they don't like, deserve the hype, I will say that. And that is what makes me, made me initially call them trash, because they're not trash. They're acceptable cookies. They're not bad. But for there to be so much hype surrounding them and for them to be so expensive, it's like, no, it's not justified. Nationwide in most Western countries, because crumble cookie has just been this new TikTok. They look they better than they taste. They have flavors, all these fancy creative concoctions, and they put them in a fucking pink box, and people have been enjoying and fucking them cookies up. And personally, them cookies are not that damn good. Them cookies to me are soggy as fuck. Them cookies to me okay. are underdone. Them cookies to me but are again, unseasoned. I cookies can't speak to me about all the throw flavors. right back in the oven for another 35, 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, them shits are not done. But I will say that crumble cookies aren't that bad for people to be making videos spitting them out. Yeah, y'all do. They're not nice. good, but they're not awful either. They're okay. And it really just depends on the cookies that y'all get. Fact. Some of y'all are getting all these random cookies, like, you know, con confetti cake cookie and be thinking that it's going to be magnificent. I mean, come on now. Like, you're paying $4 for, like, a fucking cookie. You know what I mean? And it's a hype cookie. It's not even some cookie that's gourmet. It literally... You want to overpack for some cookies? Get up. Uh, what are those... Cookies I was paying too much, like hundred and seventy dollars a box for. Ooh, I forgot the name of those cookies, but I was eating them for a minute. They was they was good, but those even wasn't worth what they were charging. Uh, Keith Lee told me about them, not me directly. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. Last crumb. Cookies are probably packaged and taken out of like little Ziploc bags. They got some new or probably made by fucking factory about. workers, or they pay like a couple pennies. To the dollar. Okay, Christian yeah. Keys needs okay, to be canceled yeah, immediately. Bro, y'all remember Christian Keys? Do y'all remember oh, that actor guy that went around oh, saying that he had a box. secret recording, a secret spy what device, a secret pen, where he was allegedly <laughs> recording a very wealthy billionaire who has given money to HBCUs and how this mm -hmm. person's a predator, how he done slept in this man's bed, and how this man tried to come on to him and have sex with him. Dude tries to climb into bed with you. I remember reacting to this. Yeah. So you spaz out, push him out, like, what the fuck? Get ready to leave. He apologizes. Blame it on the alcohol. Statue of limitations. Run out. It's never been about money. My concern is that this person is still doing it. Um, still a predator. I have kept one of these on me. It's a record. I've kept one on my own. 18 years. What happened, though? I'm gonna figure out how the fuck did we just forget about Christian Keys coming out with all these allegations, didn't even say a name, went viral, and then out of nowhere he just disappeared and lived his merry life. They paid his ass off. And to be honest with you, I don't trust him and I don't fuck with people like that. He was just doing that intentionally because he wanted what he wanted. He worked with this apparent person that funded projects in the, in the Hollywood industry on numerous occasions. A lot of us thought it was Tyler Perry, then a lot of us thought that it was this other billionaire dude. 
And honestly, the fact that he disappeared showed that he was paid off. He was obviously requesting a lot of money so that way he could take care of himself. And he was doing this as a threat to show this person like, hey, I got something on you. Now give me what you want. He is a conniving, manipulative, sick fuck. Oh. He is blackmailing somebody instead of making it seem like he, you know, cares about victims and this person's a predator. You care about your own pockets and you care about yourself. You're trying to literally leverage what someone did to you. Someone whose house you literally slept in on numerous occasions, worked with numerous times, just so you can get okay. leverage on them to eventually blackmail them in the future. I don't trust Christian Keys because he's going to be canceled. And I'm telling you, karma is so real because you made it seem like you cared about all these victims. You made it seem like there's all these predators in the industry and that they need to be exposed. But look what you did. I don't get why people still go to the movies anymore. The movies is boring as fuck. You go to the movies, you pay $16 for popcorn, you get a soggy ass hot dog and I'm some watered down that. ketchup and mustard. The movies is a scam. I'd rather just pirate my movies and watch them for free. Now, don't tell anybody I told y'all this, but I use this site called upmovie upmovie.net where basically I can watch almost any movie I want for free. I'm not going to put it in the description box because I want this video taken out. Upmovies.net is going to be that shit. That's what y'all need to use. Stop fucking paying for the movies and stop you paying for Netflix and Hulu and all this shit. They're raising their prices literally every fucking month. Oh I'm not paying $15 for Hulu when it was like 7 when I first got it. All these movies on Hollywood are trash. That's why it's kind of difficult for me to feel bad for a lot of these actors in movies who are striking and getting upset because they can't go back to work and getting upset because they're not getting good health care and benefits. Come out with better shit. Friends who ghost you because they got into a relationship are not your real fucking Woo! I'm dealing with this right now with one of my friends. Okay, ghosting is a reach. She has not ghosted me, but oh, she's not around. <laughs> she is not. Oh, I could watch the Joker movie on here. Oh, they got Joker. They got some uh some shit on here. But I just don't trust these sites. Am I with a virus or something? Um. Anyway, yes. I've had many friends like, well, not many, but I've had a few friends like this in, in my past as well who do this. Usually women who are very male-centered do this. They get a man and it's like they're nowhere to be found. You don't hear from them. You got to hit them up. You hang out with them once every blue moon and it's like, oh, okay. Don't call me <laughs> when you and this nigga don't work out because I'm going to I'm gonna be distant and I'm going to have other things to do. I'm going to prioritize my other friends who have been around even when they're in relationships because they can multitask. Hello, that's what I'm going to do. Don't try to come and be back up under me and think we're about to be close and all this hang out all the time. That, that's not the energy you was giving when you was with the, with, with the nigga. And now that y'all broke up, now you, oh, I need to be back close with my friends. No, no. Friends, some of y'all need to realize that. These people are not your fucking friends. Wake up. People don't realize that sometimes we have friends here and there. We hang out. We bond. We collectively meet up. We bond. We share stories. We have each other's backs. But then the minute some of these friends get in fucking relationships, a, they out of nowhere go ghost and then try to like act funny and act weird and they don't hit you up again. I've had this happen to me with female friends, male friends, homies, you know, homegirls. The minute they get a man, they start acting funny and they barely even show up to events. You invite them to your birthday dinners, you invite them to ceremonies, you invite them to baby showers, random shit, and they be acting stank and acting funny because, you know, their man can't go, so they're not gonna go. And I find that so pathetic when you literally go ghost or you neglect your friends just because you got into a relationship. It's one thing if they were service level friends, like friends you just go partying and clubbing with, but real yeah, friends, friends that have had your back, that have showed up for you, that are mm -hmm. there for you, that are good to you, mm -hmm. that didn't do anything to wreck it being cut off, it's not right that you allow some man to get in your head or some woman to get in your head to make you distance yourself. This goes for women and men as well. I never understood that. You should be able to prioritize having real relationships friend, outside of your intimate relationship. If you can't make time for your friends and you can't let your friends in and you can't even give your friends time to like hang out with you and share them with your man, then in my situation is this. It's either your partner is making you push them away, which is a big red flag because your partner wants to be the only person you have. And usually partners who want you to push your friends away are usually the main ones that want to be in your head, all in your head at all times. And they don't want your friends to have an opinion that they do something bad. 
those are usually red flags. The biggest red flags are the partners that make you navigate away from your friends. You should always run away from that. And that bugs me because a lot of times y'all push away some good, genuine people. And then the minute that guy, that bitch breaks your heart, the minute that bitch ass man breaks your heart or that woman breaks your heart, you want to come circling back like, hey, it's been a while. Yeah, I broke up with her. I broke up with him. And see, you're not a genuine person. The reason why a lot of these people who dump their friends when they get in a relationship, had friends to begin with, is because they're lonely. They generally just want friends to keep them company mm -hmm. because they don't have a man in their life to keep them company or to give them some type of support mm -hmm. or communication or community. You know what I mean? So they literally ditch their friends once they get into a relationship and that shit is really cold. It says a lot about somebody's character. Whoever mm -hmm. is involved with putting out that fake ass Kim Porter book on Amazon, needs to get their ass whooped and they're going to it's hell in a handbasket. Did y'all hear about that shit? No. So apparently a lot of TikTokers who want to be fake commentators who are want to be bloggers are going on TikTok and are going on, people are going on social media and Instagram saying, oh my God, Kim Porter's book got leaked. Kim Porter's book got released. Extras of it are released. However, there's been some fake ass books that people it's are releasing book. claiming that they found it, that they leaked it, and now they're putting it on Amazon. They're selling it for like $20. And hundreds of people are buying it, profiting, and putting money in these people's pockets. Some of y'all need to use our fucking common sense and not believe everything out here on the internet. I want this to be heard, and I want people to let literally absorb this right now. If you're an American and you got fucked up credit and really bad credit, take my advice. Now, I'm not an expert, but I am really good at credit repair, and I know what I'm doing coming from someone that has built their credit and done well with their credit. Do not pay your collections and off your loan if you're struggling. If you don't have the money to just outright pay off your loans and pay off your collections to fix your credit and you need your credit fixed, don't pay that shit. Here are, there are different ways to literally fix your credit. If your credit is stuck in the 500s or in the 400s, there's ways to fix it. There's so many loopholes to fix your shit. If you have fucked up credit, take notes, okay? Because most people aren't going to tell you this and they don't teach you this shit in school. You can research this. A lot of y'all pay rent, right? If you pay rent, did you know that if you live in America, you could... I looked into this because my apartment, uh, they have this as an option that you could report this. And I remember looking into it, and people were saying it's not worth it. But I, I don't know. Maybe it will help some people. I, I don't know a lot about it, but I remember when I briefly looked into it, it didn't seem like it was worth worth it for me. And I think you have to like pay a fee to do it or something. Point your rent to the credit bureau. But maybe it works. Did y'all know that? It. You can literally hit up so many fucking agencies and so many companies like Rental Karma. That's what I personally use. I personally use Rental Karma. And no, this is not sponsored. And there's level credit, really there's experience right boost, there's freaking boom pay. There's Excuse me. so many, but you can literally report your rent to the credit bureaus. I literally did that shit for somebody. Tell me why their credit literally went up like 20 fucking points in like a matter of three days. Report your rent to the credit bureaus. That's a way to boost your credit. If you need like a little bit of boost sense. to your credit, report your rent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three days, that wasn't a result of that. Nothing happens that quickly when it comes to credit. And I have great credit, by the way. Hello. <laughs> That's why when I even heard 500, I'm like, how low does it actually go? Cause I don't even know. Okay, I've had great credit my whole life, even when I was broke. I've always been very responsible with paying my bills and paying my credit cards up and all that shit anyway. Um, so, yes, trust me when I tell you, nothing happens that quickly. Even if you were to pay all your debt off, it, you wouldn't see a, a change in a few days. It, it takes time to be reported to the credit bureaus and, you know, all of that takes time. At least 30, 60 days, sometimes a bit longer. So, if, if her credit score went up 20 points in three days, it was likely... Uh, well, it was definitely because of some things that took place um, months prior. So maybe she paid off some shit or uh, something dropped off of her credit. Because after many years, things will uh, drop off of your credit, like uh, things that you were delinquent on. Um, so that's not, it wasn't a result of this. <laughs> Just take, trust me. Some people have been living at their fucking rental properties for like three, four years. And Again, I'm not saying this doesn't work because I don't know anything about reporting your, your rent. Like I said, when I briefly looked into it, they said it wasn't worth it, but I've never done it. So I have no experience with that. Uh, maybe doing that will help 
increase your credit. I'm not saying it doesn't. All I'm saying is that it ain't going to happen no damn three days. That's all I'm saying. If they report that three, four years of rent, even past rent on their shit, they shouldn't go up. If you want your credit to go up, there's ways to do it. If you're not going to report your rent to the credit bureau, which I highly suggest you do because a lot of these services only charge a small fee to do it for you, use things like this. You can even ask someone to put you as an authorized user on their credit cards. So I did this for a few people. So fun fact, if you know somebody that has credit cards and is financially responsible, ask them to put you as an authorized user on their credit cards. If you're trying to get a new car loan or you're trying to get, you know, even an apartment, if you want to boost your credit score, tell someone, you know, a friend, cousin, your granny or whoever you know that trusts you and likes you, if they can add you as an authorized user. Now, when they put you as but an authorized user, does, obviously, uh, the bank is going to send you your own credit so card, but they don't have to. You know, if you want that person to trust you, don't get a credit card because you get access to that same credit line that they have. Just make them put you as a beneficiary or an authorized user on their card, and then you literally inherit all of their five, 10 years, or seven years, or 20 years of credit history. So if your grandpa or granny has a credit card that she's been paying on time for 25 years, you literally inherit 25 years worth of credit on your fucking like credit report, which will literally jump your shit like 10 to 100 fucking points. And then if you do have the means and you do have the money, of course, pay your your collections, pay your fucking bills on time, pay your rent, pay your bills, pay all that shit on time. And if you can knock out some things off your credit report, then knock it off, pay off your collections, pay off your debt. So you know what I recommend to setting up alerts because people be scamming. I've had situations where people have gotten access to my credit card somehow. Like I remember somebody stole a credit card from my mailbox before, um, all type of weird shit. So I, ha I now have alerts. So anytime a card is used, I'm getting an email, a text, something. So I recommend doing that for sure. People will literally be like, oh, I have fucked up credit because of college and oh my God, this, that. No, you have fucked up credit because of you. There's literally loopholes. So report your rent, be an authorized user on somebody else's card or hell, even get a fucking secured card. It's not be so fucking lazy. Go to any bank that you trust and literally ask them if you can put down a down payment on a secured card. They literally lock it into a fucking random card and then you use it like a regular credit card. Pay that shit on time and your shit will literally jump up after like three months if you're responsible with it but please be responsible and pay your damn bills let's just be for real some of y'all are really irresponsible on top of that if you do pay your collections make sure you tell the motherfuckers that you want a pay to delete so that way they agree to delete shit some of y'all are paying thousands of collections and they won't even delete that shit off your credit report unless you ask you need to have a driver's license by the time you're 25 get a fucking driver's license okay even if you live in europe if you can get a driver's license and you can sacrifice some time to get a license just get one okay what happens if fucking r kelly or p diddy pops out of the fucking bushes and tries to kidnap your ass and put some ghb down your throat you want to be able to hop in a car and be able to get away from a serial killer what happens if a serial killer tries to come attack you and there's nowhere to go but there's keys and there's a car you need to be able to function that vehicle okay, drive that vehicle and get the fuck up out of there as soon as you can but just learn how to drive that is the one skill that will literally I mean, take yeah, you yeah, anywhere you want to go in life learn how to fucking drive and get your license a lot of people are driving but don't have a license be safe it's okay to not vaccinate your kids if you don't want to vaccinate your kids then it's perfectly fine the human body adapts and evolves over time and people develop a sense of immunity by going out living life putting dirt in their mouth touching things a lot of us are building our immunity sometimes dirt is good sometimes coming across bacteria and viruses is good because it builds our immunity you don't need vac vaccinations to to literally make your child immune to these things there are other ways there are other healthy natural ways to do it let's be for real for a second a lot of these people in the caribbean who didn't have access to a lot of these vaccinations 20 15 30 50 years ago a lot of them turned out fine a lot of them didn't but it's life you don't have to vaccinate your kids and you don't have to think that people who don't vaccinate their kids are problematic it's okay don't vaccinate your kids there are some people who are refusing to give their kids the chicken pox and the kobe vaccine that's fine. It's not that deep. People are giving parents shit for not vaccinating their kids in hospitals. You can say vaccinate. It's not that deep. <laughs> not everyone subscribes to Western medicine. People got to understand that everybody has their own personal beliefs. So it's really crazy when people give a lot of parents ish because they refuse to vaccinate their kids at the hospital. These kids are literally being fucking dosed the hell up before they even get a chance to leave the hospital. Yeah, uh, that for me raises a lot of red flags. But I do get why people you know, don't want to get involved. And I get why people also don't like what parents don't want to get involved. Pay phones really should still be around. I think it's ridiculous that most of the pay phones that existed in all major cities are gone and disappearing. I mean, let's be honest for a second. When was the yeah, last time y'all seen a pay phone in New York City? When was the last time I see y'all seen a pay phone yeah. in sight? I don't see any pay phones. I remember, when I was just in uh, Japan, I remember getting excited because I saw a pay phone, which is so ridiculous. But like, because I never, ever see them literally anywhere. So I was just like, oh, they have a pay phone. You know, so, yeah, I think it's wild that we don't have any anymore. Like, it can be so useful for emergencies, you know. Even though I only have my sister's number um, uh, memorized, I don't know anybody else's number by heart. 
And I only know her number because whatever, I'm gonna say what. <laughs> you were about to say payphones. They're either shut down, damaged, and broken. I think payphones should still be here because there's been times where like I've had situations where I've lost my phone and I have no access to a phone and I could easily just call somebody and say, you know, do me a favor and come pick me up and come help me. But yeah, I, out. I do think it's important to memorize at least one person's number. But after after um my mom passed away, me and my sister both were like, we need to memorize each other's numbers because her number was the only number that I knew by heart. Um, for like emergency purposes, and obviously when I was calling her when I was a kid, and I had a fucking cell phone. Um, but yeah, after she passed away, I was like, I need to memorize somebody else's number, and I'm like, my sister, because she's closer th- to me than my dad. My dad lives back in the Bay, so I'm like, memorize my sister's number. Can't do it because guess what? There's no pay phones. You ask a stranger, a stranger for their phone, they keep walking because we live in a shitty ass country like America where people get robbed and snatched up for human trafficking. So the average person, if I'm lost or struggling, is not gonna let me borrow or use their phone. Chat GPT is an evil ass invention, oh, is but it? it's a necessary evil. Chat GPT is one of the best things that's ever happened to society because if y'all didn't know, I it's a artificial it. robot of intelligence where if you want to ask it any question in the world, It'll try its very best to find answers and resources. Now to a growing problem facing high schools and universities around the world, an artificial intelligence software called ChatGPT. Oh, yeah, the software has been a cheap. hit with investors with That's Microsoft cool. reportedly planning to invest $10 billion. Students are using it to cheat on tests. So what is ChatGPT for? What's new in it? And what cool features can you try? Let's dive in. So the first cool new feature is that ChatGPT4 can understand images now. It can do anything from analyzing objects in a photo to perceiving the context of an image. Snap a photo of your fridge and it will tell you what to cook. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Identify objects, read packaging labels, or describe your surroundings. And can handle inputs of up to 25,000 words. So not only can it write essays for you, it can analyze your text, an entire book you give it, and it will remember it. And the final advantage of GPT-4 is of up to 25,000 words. So not only can it write essays for you, it can analyze your text, an entire book you give it, and it will remember it. And the final advantage of GPT-4 versus GPT-3 is in solving complex problems. For example, GPT-4 was in the top 10% of test takers in the bar exam, which means it was better than 90% of actual U.S. lawyers. And in general, it will give you a much more streamlined answer to whatever question you ask. For example, you can, your child can literally go on ChatGPT.com and say, ChatGPT, what's the square root of 43 and show your work? ChatGPT will literally show, show its work. work and teach you how to solve the equation. When I was a kid, we literally had to use Quizlet. We literally had to like go in the back of the textbook to find the answers. Yeah, we literally had to, you know, text people, go on a three-way call and ask them for the answers and what do they put. We had to write the answers down. We had to copy other people's notes to see if we could show our work. We had to write down fake work. Like, I would literally have to show my work, but I would do fake work to make it seem like I tried to solve the equation. That's just what I mean when I say chat GPT is an evil invention because back then it forced us at forced us children back in the day to be crafty and to think. Now kids can literally just get on their fucking computer, use chat GPT, and they would never know. Damn. And that would always be the thing because obviously it was like, okay, you can look up the answer. But teachers will always be like, no, you have to show your work. So that that was their way of getting around us, like, looking up the answer online. It's like, show us. Show me how you got to this answer. Especially, like, with math, obviously. That was a big thing. So I was like, fuck. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just looking up the answer. How I'm supposed to show my work. And then that's when you look up videos. and then But then that takes a lot of work. It's like, I might as well just figure out how to do this. Because <laughs> I'm watching a whole video and then having them explain it to me. It's like, okay, now I actually understand it. So I don't even need to cheat anyway. I to write you a poem about why, 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 why fried chicken is incredible is and why grapes are disgusting. Or you can tell it to literally write you a song about why apple pie is the best pie in the world. It'll literally write you a, a rap song, a bridge. It'll write you a chorus and everything. Chat GPT is literally way better than Google because it'll get you the answer quicker. And you can even ask it for therapeutic advice. You can literally ask that shit like, hey, am I tripping? So me and my ex went through this, that, and third. And Chat GPT will tell you if you're the one in the wrong or if your ex is the one in the wrong. That's how crafty and interesting it is. It's like literally talking to an actual person. And it's actually horrible. And we can all thank Elon Musk because he's actually the mastermind. Listen, I fuck with it. And I know people are scared of, I don't know why people, I always hear people are scared of AI. I'm scared of where society is going. I'm excited because I'm invested in a lot of, (laughs) a lot of AI. And I'm like, yes, yes, please release all this shit. This is, this is lit. And it's exciting. It doesn't have to be used for evil. I don't know why y'all so paranoid. Y'all minds always go like a dark place and think of the worst case scenario. It can definitely be very useful. Like we're, we should be advanced. We should be more advanced as a society. So I think things like this should exist. It doesn't have to be terrible. I mean, of course, people use everything to make shit terrible. So, of course, it's possible for people to misuse these things. But I think 
their good uses for it as well. Uh, behind it, anyway, even though he abandoned the project, and now a group of people are involved with it, and it's going to be stronger and days. stronger That's crazy. as the days progress. Uh, crazy, because it's putting us in a predicament where now we're not going to be thinking, using our brains, or reading anymore. Sure. We're going to be trusting in AI software. And what if somebody uses it and manipulates it and puts out a fake answer to try to manipulate and control the masses because all of us are using chat GPT? I mean, the saying goes, think while it's still legal. It's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye or their brain. Well, you have to literally, as a human being, always practice exercising your brain. That's why researching really helps you become a critical thinker and a more objective person. I, I now, ChatGPT like yeah. isn't biased at all. It's literally a robot. So it's not programmed to take a side. It's not programmed to think emotionally. It's programmed to think logically. And it Google has definitely like to it. find the best possible I'm answer. And I, I've used it. Don't get, me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm just as guilty for using it. I've, I've used it to literally find apartments in my area where, you know, ChatGPT, tell me what area, you know, I can find the best apartment that has this, this, that, and that nearby. And ChatGPT mm -hmm. has done it. Or ChatGPT, mm -hmm. give me advice for like what I should do for my YouTube channel. What kind of things should I do? Or ChatGPT, give me mental health advice. Somebody irritated me recently and they did this, that, and the third. It don't give me resources, advice, what's wrong with me, what I'm doing wrong, and so much more. And that's why it is fairly lucrative. So use it to your advantage if you are going to use it, but remember to learn how to think and know how to speak for yourself because sometimes people will literally repeat talking points from ChatGPT. So yes, this AI system that you ask a question to or ask it to do something will likely do something as long as they can actually write it and type it or analyze an image. But be mindful that this could work in everybody's favor, but it will later work against everybody in the near future. It's all kicks, kikis, and giggles until eventually ChatGPT tries to abuse, manipulate, and use whatever information you give it. And what if it scans your data and it knows exactly what you want and what you don't want, or it reminds you of something you told it literally seven years ago, and then years from now it uses that information against you and that information gets sold. Keep that in mind. So yeah, ChatGPT, it's getting crazy, People but I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it is beneficial and I have used it a lot. Not wanting children is very, very selfish, and I'm okay with that. The thing is, people think that being selfish that. is always a bad thing. Being selfish is always a bad thing. You know, having kids is selfish. That's a, nobody wants to talk about that. Think about why you want kids. I want to have someone who looks like me. Selfish. I want someone to love me forever. Selfish. I want to have someone to pass down my money to and keep it in my family and my last name and my legacy. My, my. All that shit is selfish. Nobody's having kids for unselfish reasons. You don't need to help populate the world. There's billions of people on this earth. We don't need no more. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we, we need more people, but people are always having kids. People are born, babies are born every second, okay? Lots of babies are born every second. We're not, you're fine. <laughs> you're not helping doing the world a service by having kids. I don't know if I ever want children or to adopt children. I'm saying you personally, if you don't want kids. Obviously, most people want children, so I, I feel like we're, we'll be fine as a society, okay? But, yeah, people acting like, oh, I need to have kids because I have to do this. No, they're... Everybody else is willing to have kids. You're fine. But if I, we're in the people who don't want kids are in the minority. Or do have children? One thing I will say is this: is I don't know how I would feel letting them out in this crazy ass world where there's all types of predators, human traffickers, diddlers, R. Kelly's in the world, and psychotic people. Are people so who weird. They actually believe kids. I mean, let's be real. More than a you fucking five hundred thousand people go missing kids. a year. And where the fuck do they go? Is there some type of underground tunnel where they're all just hiding? Where do they disappear off to? Are they in our fucking chicken nuggets that we eat? Why would I want to bring a kid into this world? I want to just be selfish and worry about myself, feed myself, wipe my own ass, clean my own fucking self, clean my own house, and not have to worry about chasing off, off, chasing off fucking... Listen, I live a great life, okay? I'm very grateful, very thankful, and my life would not be what it is if I had children. It just would not. And it's so crazy because I always look at my sister's life. No shades, my sister, okay? I'm, I'm sure she enjoys her life as well. I'm not taking anything away from her life, but I just think of how different our lives are because my sister started having kids at a very young age. She has three, okay? And she has to make decisions based on her children. and She has to prioritize her kids before, before everything else. I just do what I want to do. And I'm... I get to travel for months at a time and enjoy my life and have these amazing, fulfilling experiences that I otherwise wouldn't have had if I would have had children. Gremlins who Same. fucking do toys all over And my there's nothing home. wrong with having kids too. If that's your life and that's your purpose and that's what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with that. But respect people who don't want to do that. That's their choice and their decision. Leave them alone and you do you. You know, I want to be selfish. I want to travel the world. I want to be able to wake up one day and say, oh, you know what? I don't have to work today. I got some free time. Let me just, you know, take a quick little five hour trip out the country. Yeah, I'm okay with being selfish and so should you. Especially in this fucking economy, it's hot as hell outside. Who the fuck want kids in this day and age? But that's <laughs> oh, he said hot as hell. That's hot. I'm like, what? You guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> like, what is it?
you're being high, gotta do anything. He says high as hell. Preach, preach. I agree with that one thousand percent. I think people should just do what they want to do in life and not worry about what other people are doing. Why do you care? who's having kids and who isn't. If that's your goal in life, then you go do that. But people are very strange. I feel like it's so common in our society, okay, all over the world, that people want to shame you when you are not living your life how they live their life. It's like they want their life decisions to be validated. And when you're not living how they're they're living, it makes them insecure. It makes them feel like, oh, wait, am I doing the right thing? So they want to try to convince you that you don't, you live wrong. Why are you not doing this? Because you should be doing da 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 they, they want other people to live their lives how they're living theirs because it then makes them feel better about their own decisions. So they're, they're very insecure in that manner. And I think it's so bizarre. They, they say things like, oh, well, you'll, you'll, you'll regret not having kids. No, you will regret not having kids. Or you're afraid that you'll never get to have kids. So that's your fear and your insecurity and you're projecting that onto me. I don't, if I don't want them, then I don't want them. Why are you projecting your fears and, and shit onto me? It's very strange. People do it all the time. It's like, I, I don't want that life. We're different people. <laughs> That's the life you want. So you go and live that life. Congratulations. Go do that. Why are you upset at my decision not to live that life? What, what the fuck? Why does that make any sense? But people do it all the time, especially on, online. This is where the most insecure, mentally unstable people lurk, okay? <laughs> In these internet streets. Anyway, um, yes, very interesting opinions he had. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all of them. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.